In this lecture, we will discuss about Ampere Maxwell's law. First, what is Ampere law? This law states that the line integral of the magnetic field around any closed path is mu naught times the net steady current enclosed by that path. Here, the current is passing through the wire. Magnetic field is produced in form of circle. P is the point where we want to find the magnetic field. And we have also a small segment of the loop DL. And uh, magnetic direction of the magnetic field and DL, and DL are both in the same direction. And both are tangential to the loop. Uh, the magnetic field uh, actually is uh, in the plane which is perpendicular to the length of the wire. And the uh, direction of the magnetic field can be found by the right hand rule, where the thumb points in the direction of the current and uh, fingers uh, are sweeping around, in the, around the wire in the direction of magnetic field. So, because there is angle of zero degree between B and DL, so cos of zero, one, so we have B uh, times closed integral DL, where B is uniform, so we keep B outside of the integral. Closed integral of DL is the integral of element will form the whole circle of circumference two pi r. So we replace this with two pi r. Now equating equation one and two, we get B equal mu naught i over two pi r. This is the magnetic field at some distance r from a long straight wire carrying a steady current i. So here, the conclusion is that the Ampere's law is only true for steady currents. The second is the magnetic field inside the loop remains constant. So this current I, which is uh, arising due to the flow of charges is called the conduction current. And we have a symbol IC. So just we replace I with IC over here to show that we are talking about the conduction current. <clears throat> According to Maxwell, there was some deficiencies in Ampere's law. He took a capacitor and applied the Ampere's law to calculate the magnetic field at a specific point in between the capacitor plates. Point P, as shown in this figure, is where he determined the magnetic field which is due to the conduction electron flowing through the wire. And he found the same result, B is equal mu naught i over two pi r. But for the second case, he considered a surface like a bag and its uh, top is open. He applied uh, the Ampere's law again to this uh, type of uh, Amperian loop but this time he found there is no current flowing through inside the capacitor. It means current is zero. So if current is zero between the plates, then magnetic field is zero. He found that the magnetic field is not same at the same point P, but with different Amperian loops or surfaces. Hence he suggested that there are some flaws in Ampere's law. He corrected and made Ampere's law consistent in all cases. He actually modified Ampere's law to include the time varying electric field. So <clears throat> he assumed that there has to be some current existing between the plates. And uh, there are electrons flowing outside of the capacitor and generate current and magnetic field. So this he named as conduction current, but there are 
no conduction of charges between the plates. He said that there is time varying electric field between plates, which generates the current. And this uh, time varying electric field is uh, directed from positive plate to the negative plate. Because the amount of charge on capacitor increases with time, so the electric field between plates increases with time as well. If the current stop, there is uh, an electric field between plates as long as the plates are charged, but there is no magnetic field around the wire. Maxwell decided that the new type of current, which is associated with this changing of electric field, and he named that current a displacement current. So it means outside of the capacitor, there is only conduction electron and no displacement current. Inside the capacitor, there is no conduction current, but only displacement current. So as the charge is, as the charge on the capacitor changing with time, so the current will be produced and that we can write in the form of this formula, I d is equal to derivative of Q. Because for a capacitor, we have a total charge Q is equal epsilon naught E A, where E is the electric field and A is the area of the plate. So we simply replace Q with these terms and uh, you know ea is the electric flux so this means current is produced because of changing of electric flux with respect to time uh, or you can say electric flux is generated due to the presence of electric field between the plates here is a conclusion that current is not zero between the plates but it is and that is displacement current. And the second conclusion is magnetic field is also produced by time varying electric field or you can say a displacement current because changing electric field induces magnetic field according to the Faraday's law. So changing electric field can produce a magnetic field inside between the plates. So he solved uh, by using the same, by using all of these assumptions, he he again uh, find the magnetic field outside and inside of the capacitor. He found that by that the magnetic field inside of the capacitor is same as the magnetic field outside of the capacitor. So this means that. Uh, by adding this term now to the, by considering the whole system, he updated the Ampere's law and he said closed integral V dot DL is equal mu naught into IC plus ID. IC conduction current, ID displacement current. Where simply mu naught IC plus ID, he replaces with the term epsilon naught, mu naught, and derivative of pi E. So, this is how he modified the Ampere's law and made it possible to solve such a problems. Thank you all for watching this video. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, share with your friends.